Hi, I'm Mark Zipp at Crocker Farm Auction, and I'm here to discuss a fabulous example of John Bell pottery that we'll be offering in our November 3rd auction. A lot of you are familiar with these hunt scene pictures that were produced by John Bell and uh, his relatives down in Strasburg, Virginia, and even the Everleys uh, in Strasburg, Virginia. Uh, it's, a, it's a very well-known Shenandoah Valley form that's based on a form produced by Ian W. Bennett of Baltimore in Rockingham Ware. So somewhere along the line, the Bells started copying their form, and we see this uh, interesting hunt scene design. We have a boar with hounds on this side, and a central tree and then a stag with hounds on this side, attacking the stag. And the Bells modeled these with different handles. This was John Bell's uh, typical handle that he used for these, and this wasn't something that you would see on the Bennett examples, but John Bell reworked this piece uh, to have an applied molded twig handle. Some of the ones you'll see from Strasbourg will have different style handles than that. There's a number of these molded hunt scene pictures known. Um, it's always been considered a desirable form, whether it's a John Bell example from Waynesboro or whether it's a multi-glaze example from uh, down in the valley. But this example is arguably the best example of the form known. It's a very, very striking piece. It's really ahead of its day. Uh, in, in, in the quality of its glaze. John Bell was a real master of glazes. His glazes were much more sophisticated than what his brothers uh, were doing down in Strasburg, Virginia. And this piece really typifies that. You can see we have this great three-colored surface. We have blue at the top and then this great opaque green and then this nice brown at the base we look at the underside, we even see that another treatment was involved. That this piece was actually dipped in a cream colored slip first over its natural red clay. And then these designs or these decorations were applied over top of that. They were most likely sponged. At least it seems evident that the cobalt and the manganese the blue at the top and the brown at the bottom were sponged, and the, and the, the copper may have been sponged as well, um, applied over top of that slip, which gives this beautiful opacity to the three colors involved. You can really see the sponging on the handle and the cream glaze on the handle as well. You can see we have this cream with this uh, blue sponging over top of it, dappled on there. And that's reminiscent of Bell's early tin glaze products, dating all the way back to Winchester, Virginia. If you look at the inside, it looks very much like a regular redware pitcher. We can see it's orange. Um, it has that rustic earthenware clay. But the exterior has this very modern look. I mean, it's, it's, it's really quite unbelievable what he could do being a, a backcountry potter in Pennsylvania, um, producing ware for farmers and townsfolk that were modeled after fancier English wares and fancier American wares, um, but were made with, with uh, simple local clay and, and uh, lead glazes and metallic oxides. And this looks like a piece that you would think was made at a very well-to-do pottery, a very sophisticated pottery. And you would also think that this piece wasn't made around 1870, which it was. It looks like something that's much more modern than that, um, as I said. So it's really ahead of its time. Um, it's really uh, important in the sophistication of the glaze, but it's also really beautiful too. You can see right here, typically you'll have a John Bell Maker's Mark on the underside. This isn't signed on the underside. It actually has a, Columbia, um, a Cumberland County Historical Society sticker on the bottom. 
um, from when it was displayed there. But interestingly, instead of marking the underside, he stamped this piece right along the tree. And that might make, uh, might have been done to make the piece, the, the signature, uh, a little more prominent on this specially glazed example. To our knowledge, this example is unique. Um, and it's a really important example of 19th century American pottery that's taking glazing techniques a, a step further. And we're very excited to offer it at our November 3rd auction.